Привет, товарищ меня, Красная Армия 1. Hello, comrades, my name is Red Army 1. Now, it's been a long time since I've made a video. Um, I've been gone and busy for about a solid month now. Um, there hasn't been any videos lately or Tactics Tuesdays. That's specifically Tactics Tuesdays is because um, there was some stuff at school that uh, sort of pushed that out of the way and uh, some other things, but uh, tomorrow there will definitely be one. Uh, but today is an update video on things that I have and got in the mail. Um, I'm going to start off with my pride and joy here. This, uh, it's an original, Tornister, um, dated 1937, Dresden, and uh, it's marked right up there. I'm going to try and see that for you. Uh, yeah, I don't think the camera's going to be able to focus very well on it. Um, but you can just possibly make out 1937 below there. Might look like 47. Um, but it says 3L.A.G. Dresden, uh, and then it has 1937 um, below it. I got this off eBay for, what was it, 50 or $70, something like that. It's canvas backing and sides. Um, it's got a leather bottom and top. These two rivets here are for the Tornister straps. Um, they came with it. Uh, to get, uh, until I get proper leather tornister straps or, um, leather tornister straps or the, just the little, uh, sort of tornister hooks for Y straps or anything like that, I think I'm just gonna leave it and then I'm gonna get an Africa Corps belt with regular army belt buckle so I can sort of go more with my ROA stuff and my early German, uh, kit. But for right now, it is, it's exactly the way I got it from uh, the mail. And if we flip it over, you'll see the fur on the front. Uh, because it's an original, I don't think it was stored very well, obviously. It does have some very interesting scrapes like this line all the way here is just hair that's been ripped out all these little white spots are hair that's gone and it's uh, the hide of it obviously this big patch here at one point um, I thought it was just got ripped out um, but now looking at it interestingly enough uh, I think what happened is this ripped and you can see thread all along where it's ripped all the way up and around here and it seems as though somebody's gone in with a needle and thread and they've repaired it once um, and uh, just it didn't really work out well and then you have obviously the big scraped for a place uh, spot there I think what I'm gonna do with this is get it slowly restored and I'll let you know how that's going I'm thinking I can take this to a, uh, a store around where I'm at um, and they can actually carefully unstitch the leather all along here, get this fur off, possibly replace it um, with artificial fur or something. And I don't really want that to happen, so I'm, uh, my other option is just remove the fur and have the canvas below it. Um, that's down there. This up top as well, this is for your canteen. A lot of people think this is um, for an overcoat or something. It's not. It's for a canteen. Your M31 canteen gets its loop put through there and placed there. Your overcoat and blankets go around here. That's why it has the strap on the side here and here. And I think one up top. Or no. Okay. Um, I'm now going to open up the top flap here and show you the 
inside, but before I do, on the bottom, it has the buckle on the right and the buckle on the left, and then this little tab on the inside there. And then these buckles, everything on here is original. Um, you know, the straps are very loose. Um, you know, this one, it's been used so much, it doesn't even really buckle. Um, you just, you feel how, I guess, used um, would be the right word that the leather is on it. Uh, and it's it's quite interesting because for me, um, you know, it gives me that bit of my imagination to say somebody clearly used this in battle, perhaps in 3940, um, and then, you know, got an A-frame and then it was just kaput. Um, so I find that just something in the back of my mind here. And then we flip this up. And there's the inside. We have one, two, and then the third buckle down here, at least the strap, is missing. Um, I had thought it was just this one and this one were missing, or it was the strap up here and the buckle down here. But I'm happy that two of the three um, had made it, because I was what I was going to do originally was get an M, uh, M40... Uh, black German equipment strap and just have to, you know, put it in the places that it needed to be. But these straps are surprisingly well put together. Um, you know, they don't come apart all that easy. They still hold together quite well. Um, as I said, I got this in the mail today and it's, I was just thrilled. <sighs> and then we have this tab for here, which would be for another strap like buckle, um, and that would be for, uh, uh, it would be at the ba back here, and you'd loop it through on top of this one, the one that folds down, that folds down, and it would go through here just to keep it all, uh, secure. On the inside, I just shoved some, uh, some things in there, um, we can see my Soviet 1942, uh, reproduction, Ammo pouches from Hiki Shop, uh, both of them. My M36 ROA enlisted man's field cap. Um, this little, this is like a, it's a model cannon thing that I just found. Um, it had a whole like little naval frame for it. It was very decorative and nice, but I. I think over the years I lost it or something. I'm going to make another one for it. Uh, doesn't belong here, but this is my GP5 gas mask uh, bag. And then on the inside is uh, just some other German uh, insignias and whatnot. If we go to the inside of the pack, it's very roomy. I was honestly surprised how much room was able to be... Uh, in here. The bottom, there's not much, it's just the rivets from the buckles, um, the sides, it's just some leather holding it up on the sides. I believe on the inside originally there was some sort of these leather sort of tabs stuck out and then there was a sort of figure eight rope that or elastic or something that would be tied across here just to keep it all tight and together. Um, the sides, obviously, they fold open and closed, uh, and then underneath the leather here is the Y-strap sort of rivets. You pull these off, and then there's a washer here and a bolt, and then that pulls off, and then you can just faintly see under there is the da is the uh, canvassed Y strap like webbing. Uh, put that over there. Um, it seems as though, again, this really hard and tough leather or rawhide or something holds it together quite sturdy. Uh, and then up top here we have this slit. Uh, this would be for, I think, 
personal items or something. And then we obviously have a rip hole, ripped hole in there. Uh, as with here, um, it appears as though, and I don't know much about tornisters that much, but I, this is where a button would be. And you button that so it would be two big slits uh, for stuff. If we lift this side up, actually, we can see the sort of markings and slash serial number. So it reads up top where my thumb is at, reads 337. And then down here is a sideways J-I. And then we have 3 slash H. U S. No idea what that means. Probably just some markings and serial number and whatnot. But yeah, it's just it's a great find. If you can get a hold of an original Tornister, especially at the price that I got, do it without hesitation. They are just it's they're so sort of rare nowadays. The reproductions cost about three times more than a than a original. Uh, some of them. It depends if you do World War One or World War Two. Obviously, this one would be World War Two because it's thirty-seven. And then the strap. What I'm gonna do is these straps here because they're so long, and I could actually double loop them, um, which many soldiers would do. I'm gonna when I get my gas mask canister, I'm just gonna put it in there like that, and uh, see how she goes. Um, and I think she'll look quite nice. It's a bit of an early war piece. And then on the sides here, a bit more restoration. There's a hole there. And I think... Um, oh, no. Yeah, just a hole there. So, great piece. I'm so happy I was able to get it at the price that I did. Um, on to the next thing, because this is more of a Tornister video, that I got was... Next thing that I got was this. Uh... It's an original. Uh, it was made specifically for me um, by a Russian seller on eBay. I can't recall his name right now, um, but he does have uh, videos explaining the Bashlik, which is what this is, and other things. I got it in red and the white trim here to match my Kuban uh, Cossack hat. Um, and it's it's very nice. This one is a gabardine material, so it's a, it's more for a dress, like a special ceremony, like a dress type occasion, than a uh, battle. Um, but it's it's really nice. There's different ways to wrap it and whatnot, and it just it's it's very nice. This will be part of my and is part of my um, Cossack uh, Russian Liberation Army equipment. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, give it a like, comment, subscribe. Um, that's about all I think of right now. Tomorrow, as I said, there will be a Tactics Tuesday. Um, not sure what it will be on just yet. I've had a few requests. Uh, so I guess I'll surprise you with what it'll be tomorrow. So until next time, have fun. Red Army 1, signing off.